The biggest mistake I made in my business was not hiring a professional to help me with my money. Not just my taxes, but the actual plan I had for my business. I was completely lost on how to handle taxes, what to do with profit, and how to maintain my income. I had to find a better way. That's when I found Core Financial. Core Financial is a team of tax professionals that actually care about building real relationships with their clients. They run my books, keep me up to date with my finances, and make sure I'm taking full advantage of all of my tax benefits. Are you struggling with your finances? Look no further. Core Financial is a brand that is nationwide that can help you with your business. Both Nick and I are huge fans of Core and they can help you too. Check out howtofilmweddings.com slash core to schedule a consultation today. Core Financial, real relationships, no surprises. Really sound also just it builds up the anticipation, right? And weddings, a lot of weddings are about anticipation. I think that there's more suspense built into wedding films than we often talk about, um, right? If you think of the wedding day, there's a lot of anticipation. The bride and the groom, excited, nervous to see each other. They can't wait for that moment. Um, and we, we can play with that, we can heighten that. Hello and welcome to How to Film Weddings. My name is John Bunn. Today is a good day. As always, I'm joined by Nick Deep Nuggets Miller. Mr. Deep Nugs, how are you doing this fine day? I'm, I'm doing good, Mr. Sticky Buns. Man, we haven't <laughs> we haven't used those those words in a while. Like we haven't we haven't brought up the the crock pot and the nuggets and the sticky buns in a while. Maybe we should we should do that. We're doing it right now. We are doing, doing that right now. We are doing that. I'm 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 doing well. I'm doing well. Um, little little life stuff. I um, because you know quarantine's been a little awesome. You know the. I haven't freshman, heard anyone say quarantine's been awesome. You're the first person. Well, I, I said that sarcastically. I said that sarcastically. Oh, yes, you yes, know yes. you know when you you go to college and you gain the freshman fifteen. Like that's a uh -huh. thing, yeah. you uh -huh. know, I, I'm sure that there's some quarantine throw in a number, right? That people mm. have been gaining weight. And so mm -hmm. me, I decided I was tired of it. I hired a trainer and I'm 38. I'll be 40, you know, like 12, 14 months, 14, 15 months. I decided I want to be in the best shape of my life by 40. I have 15 months to do it. So I hired a trainer and I started that this week, tracking my food, going to the gym. Anyway, I'm, I'm excited about that. So that's what I'm doing. A little, with my a little life. cranky. Or are you good? Is everything I, I good? I mean, I mean, um, probably a little cranky. Pro probably oh, a little yeah. bit. But <laughs> you're asking, you're asking me that question like you don't know the answer. I've been talking to you this week, and you know, you're a little short. It's fine. It's good. Though. A little short. A little short. But you know, it's it shows that you're a human, and that's that's good. That's good news, Nick. Though, but I, we forgot we have a podcast we're hosting. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I was just talking about my personal today, life. You know, sorry. Which which is good. I think people want to hold you accountable for that that dad bod um, to you know to be <laughs> to be a rad bod, and so um, <laughs> today though, Nick. Yes. Seamlessly transitioning into the topic of the day. Yes. We had we had a pretty cool uh, set of guests on today. Why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about yeah. them? Yeah. So um, we had Michael from Wetter on, who has been on several times, and recently uh, Ryan Coda, who many of you know from Facebook groups and stuff, who is a uh, audio wizard. That might be the best mm. way to put it. Like he he's yep. just been around for years and he knows uh, good audio and how to manipulate it and how to make it sound great and, and all of that. They have they have recently hooked up together. So if you hire Wetter, a service that you can add on to your package is audio mixing. And so he will Ryan will go in and, and mix your film. Um, all that stuff. They started working together. And so they wanted to come on and talk about um, the importance of audio and why you should be focusing on it. And, um, you know, kind of towards the end, uh, we have a cool thing where Ryan actually uh, played a video that he did all the sound editing for. And so he does it one with everything. And then he does one where he plays it without the music. So you can just kind of hear all of the sound stuff. So if you're listening to this on audio podcast, uh, we, we want you to head over to maybe our YouTube or our Facebook page so you can actually watch it if you want to see the visuals that are going along with that but it was really really great conversation really powerful no coincidence the uh we talk about some of the upper ups in the industry who are kind of at the cream of the crop at the top all of them have a focus on sound 
Hmm. Is that hmm. coincidence or or what? So great episode today. I'm excited to talk about it. I've been rambling long enough. John, how about we just jump in? Let's go. All right. Well, thank you so much, Michael and Ryan, for joining us on the podcast today. This is an exciting episode. We had Ryan on before. We've had Michael on before. Never together. So we're excited to talk to you guys together. Um, why don't you guys say hello, introduce yourself to the How to Film Weddings community in case they don't know who you are so we can get this conversation going. All right. Hi, guys. I'm Michael from Weditor. Uh, everybody knows I've been running Weditor for the past four years. And uh, we are here today to demystify sound. So we'd like yeah. to talk about sound with you. We feel that it's, um, you know, it's overlooked. It's an area of the filmmaking process that most filmmakers are uncomfortable with. It is arguably the biggest weakness um, that we most commonly see. Um, in terms of me and my background about sound really quickly, um, I studied film at San Francisco State University and I had a sound class with Pat Jackson. Pat Jackson was part of Walter Murch's team. If you know Walter Murch, he's a legendary editor and sound designer. Um, and Pat Jackson worked with him on The Godfather Part II, Apocalypse Now, The English Patient. She also worked on a lot of early Pixar films like Toy Story and A Bug's Life. And so being in class with her, listening to her talk about film from a sound perspective just blew my mind. Mm -hmm. um, then when I started my own professional career as a videographer, and I was doing a lot of early internet video content, um, specifically for the Intercontinental Hotels group around the world, where we would go to a city and we'd make 12 short more or less commercials about different venues in the city for the hotels. At this time, this was from 2005 to 2010, there was no music bed. There was no sound mm -hmm. stripe. So we had to create the music ourselves in GarageBand. So I became very familiar with loops and putting music together and through that learning how to edit with rhythm, tempo, crescendos and the importance of all of that. Sure. Um, so that's a little bit about my background specifically related to sound. And Ryan, we've had you on before, but why don't you say hello and kind of give everyone kind of a background on you as well. Thank you very much, and uh, it's great to be back on. And my name is Ryan Coda, and I am a sound engineer. Um, and I have I got my start back a uh, long time ago. I was a musician and um, had a musical ear, could listen to stuff off the radio and be able to play it um, almost instantly, be able to... Um, pick out the notes and, and chord progressions, et cetera. And then um, when I was 17, I moved to L.A. And luckily uh, got a job at a studio, a world-class music studio down there. And they took me under their wing and trained me from intern all the way up to recordist, editor, mixer, et cetera, for all things music. That's albums, that's music scores for films, et cetera. And then they took a pivot right around 2005, 2006, and they took a pivot and, and started doing post-production for film because music, um, the music industry started declining then. Um, most everybody had a little rig they had in their bedrooms that they could record their songs and, and create awesome stuff that didn't need the big time studios uh, to record and edit and mix for them. So I luckily got um, put into basically a post-production for film and TV situation with dialogue. So I was recording dialogue. I was recording ADR, which is automated dialogue replacement for the actors who came back in and then had to re-record their lines because of noisy sets or in non-optimum uh, recordings on sets. Mm -hmm. And I had a knack for that, and I just kept doing that. And then on top of that, I started doing live sound and I was sent around the world doing events from anywhere from 200 people to 10,000 people. Um, and I was mainly a recordist. So I would set up mission critical recording rigs that would record events that needed to be recorded, no fail. And uh, <laughs> while doing that, I got, you know, a whole indoctrination of the difference between a studio environment and then a live environment, which is almost um, completely different in terms of how you set up, how you, your mentality of, you know, backups upon backups upon backups for live sound. And then I got into uh, music for live bands and live events and, and concerts. So I started doing those as well and touring, touring with bands. And um, on top of that, I 
uh, my wife and I had a had a child, and we moved back home where I grew up to Northern California, and I started working with the Sacramento Kings and some games for Boo. the Golden State Sorry. Warriors. Boo! And, uh, <laughs> doing the broadcast team. Team for them for both um, <laughs> for radio and and TV situations and stuff. So that's been a lot of fun and a totally different beast as well. So. Um, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Basically, my background. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's really cool. And Nick, he said Golden State Warriors. I'm a big Oklahoma City Thunder fan. I mean, I know <laughs> hey, you're you in know, Kansas. You know, you're Katie a doesn't fan. play for Golden State anymore. Like Kevin he's gone. Durant <laughs> is the worst thing that's ever happened. To the I, NBA, I know, but but, but we we can talk. <laughs> he's about not that a part later. of Golden State anymore. Like you can let well, that part go. Yeah, whatever. He's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> so okay so today nick we we kind of like we get asked a lot in like the facebook groups and different things a lot of people talking about sound and we do want to demystify sound because i think it's this afterthought so many times especially you know i remember in my career it was just like oh my goodness i'm recording with you know wireless mics i hope it sounds good if it doesn't i'm just not going to use audio and like it was just i never you know i don't have this formal training with audio and you know, I think a lot of times in the group, it's basically like arguments. Like, is it, you know, I, someone posted a day about a Tascam in the group for sale and another person jumped in and was like, you shouldn't buy that one. You should buy this and you shouldn't. And I think we get into this like gear war, you know, or whatever. It's like, which one is better? Things like that. And so today with you two on the line, I really want to kind of demystify the sound. You know, Nick and I really want the listeners out there to kind of think about sound in a different way. So I want to open up the conversation to the two of you, um, just kind of how, wh what you guys are seeing. I know Michael, you're with, with Wetter and you're, you're seeing all kinds of sound and then Ryan doing all these production things. And so I just want to shift the conversation over into kind of why the two of you are in the same room with us today. Um, and then kind of some of the things that we can talk about to demystify yeah. sound itself. So so really quickly, Ryan and I uh, connected uh, a number of months back, um, earlier, pretty much at the beginning of the year, and you know we just kind of realized, oh, firstly, we're both from the San Francisco Bay Area, um, mm -hmm. and as we got talking, and Ryan was telling me about his background, and we started talking about how wedding films really are a mix of music and live events, and you know, and film, and, and Ryan had all of this experience in all of these, and you know, he was already helping out some filmmakers on the side that would, you know, hey, can you fix this for me or can you fix that? And so we decided to partner together um, so that we could offer, you know, more audio packages um, for our clients or for anybody interested in them. And well, more about that later, though. Um, but, you know, as, as we were talking, we also we, we saw this Northern California, the San Francisco Bay Area kind of synergy. And we realized it's like what, what came to mind is something we hadn't thought about that much before. But that is that you know, in the San Francisco Bay Area, you have George Lucas, you have Skywalker Sound and ILM, Francis Ford Coppola, Zoetro Productions, which is what Walter Murch mainly at the time was editing for Coppola. Most people don't realize that Dolby's headquarters is here, right? Pixar is here. You go all the way back to the 1960s. Atari's headquarters was here in the 70s when they launched and into the tech industry today. And so when you do work in the Bay Area in any creative field, sound is in your face. It is mm -hmm. important. You cannot escape the importance of it. Um, and so, yeah, we just want to share that knowledge because we are seeing that it is, again, the biggest weakness of filmmakers. Um, and we want people to get comfortable with it. We want you to embrace it, become confident, and you're going to elevate your work. There's a great quote, which I absolutely love. And, you know, we all are familiar with seeing is believing. Um, but there's also a quote, hearing is believing. And that's from a, a very famous video game designer uh, named Jesse Schell. And um, he talks about that, that sound is what truly convinces the mind that it's in a place. In other words, hearing is believing, right? And mm -hmm. we'll talk more about how, how that is true and how sound lets you hear emotion later. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of an, an overview of why we're doing this. Yeah, yeah. You know, sound is, you know, really important. And that's that's what we're going to be talking a lot about today. Um, I know it's hard to be confident when so many of us are confused by, you know, the basic terminology. So why, why don't we um, go there with kind of sound and audio? You know, is there a difference between sound? Is there a difference between audio? Um, is there a difference or is it like video and film? So why, why don't you just kind of break some of that stuff down for us? Yeah, so... Um that comes up a lot, and I, I see a lot of people referring to sound and referring to audio. Um, one of the main differences that I want to point out is whenever you look at when you're talking about the artistic field of post-production and even uh, production on set, they call 
it sound. They call it post production sound. Um, even even on the the titles that people have, like sound designer and supervising sound editor um, and sound department. I think that whenever we're talking about uh, it as an artistic endeavor and and what we do in in the post production and capturing sounds and sound effects and dialogue and everything, I think that is uh, the correct term to use. And audio to me seems like it's a bit more connected to like audio visual AV whenever you're talking about like the systems that things get played back on and things like that. Um, I think that's where audio steps in, but obviously you can interchange them and they get interchanged a lot. But um, I prefer to use the word sound when dealing with this, you know, this field. You, you, ref- you prefer to use the word sound when it has something to do with what you hear, right? I mean, that, that makes sense. So um, I know for me, for the longest time, um, you know, whenever I would make these films, you know, I would, you know, just record on my recorder and I might make the volume a little bit louder, uh, you know, from, you know, a lapel that I had or, you know, at a probably too much noise reduction. So they sound really metally and echoey, you know, because I didn't know what I was doing, you know, but I, I think with a lot of people, especially when you're first starting out, because, um, you know, when you're a wedding filmmaker, you're doing all of this stuff, right? You're starting, you're, you're shooting it, you're editing it, you're trying to color it, you're trying to do the sound, like you're just, you're just trying to do so much. And so, uh, sound typically be, can, tends to be that thing that is, you know, forgotten or, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm done with this film. I just, I just need to tweak a few things and then I can upload it because we're just so excited to get it out in the world. So what do you say to someone that maybe takes that approach or has the approach of, you know, sound isn't, isn't as important as, you know, the visuals or the color or, or something like that? What do you say to that? Mm-hmm. So I would say that sound allows us to hear emotion. I think that that's the biggest thing, right? Visuals allow us to see it. Sound allows us to hear it. And when we put that together, we can feel it. Mm. Okay. That's kind of how I'd say, um, <clears throat> you know, I did, there's a lot of filmmakers out there. I know again, going back, we just mentioned George Lucas. He, he would always say that sound is 50% of the movie going experience. And he even thought that audience was, were moved sometimes more by what they heard in his films by what they see. And I think that's totally a testament when you think back on star Wars and especially, you know, the, the score and, just everybody around the world knows that score, right? As soon as they Mm -hmm. hear it. Um, But so, yeah, so sound is definitely as important as the visuals. I mean, think about it. You know, we hear the bride popping the champagne bottle. We hear the groom laughing. We hear the father of the bride holding back tears, right, during a first look, for example. And that's all because of sound. Yeah, I mean, I would say, you know, as wedding filmmakers, you know, my I guess my excuse, especially at the beginning, was like, you know what, like I'm going to do my best, but maybe, you know, the couple won't even notice or like people don't notice or it's it's not something that people notice. What would you say to the, the listeners out there that are like, I can't really invest into sound because I really don't think people are even going to notice? That's a really good question. And um, and that sparked a question with me when I started looking at uh, where are your clients viewing your your products that you create for them you create a film you create a feature you create this uh documentary edit or just the ceremony uh where are they going to sit down and watch it because i was thinking about that when you know you have these awesome threads of hey critique my film or can someone you know critique this and i think most of the time people are just swiping down on facebook on their phone and they're listening and watching on their phone and then they give their feedback etc but you know, I just envision it's an important question because once you get up into the the echelon of like seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollar wedding films that you're creating for these these clients, um, if they're able to afford those, they're most likely able to afford, you know, a really nice living room setup or their own personal theater in their home. And who's to say they're not you know, sitting together, watching Netflix, watching the most recent blockbuster, and the spouse turns to the other and says, hey, let's put on our film. Let's put on our mm-hmm. our feature and watch it tonight. And they watch it in stark contrast to that blockbuster or that Netflix film that just played with amazing quality sound. And then they put yours on. And that's <laughs> what got me thinking, like, okay, there's, you know... Uh, 
I think that that for many filmmakers um, is the next step and the next, you know, polish point of making their films that much better. Yeah, That's good. yeah, definitely. Um, I, I, I think all, all those points are really great. I had never I mean, it, it is proven data. I think that, you know, it's well over 65 or 70 percent of people are watching content, you know, on their phones, you know, on the go. But just because 65 or 70 percent of people are doing that, like who's to say that, you know, they're not also watching it somewhere else or, you know, also doing it somewhere else and and putting it in, in, in that context. I remember, you know, when it came to sound John a while ago, I sent him this film and I was like, hey, watch this. And I was just editing on my laptop speakers and he has some like nice, like kind of, you know couple hundred dollar Bose, you know, speakers, you know, sitting on his desk. And he was like, dude, when you had that, that, that fade out in that whoosh, like it almost exploded my office because it was just so, (laughs) because on my laptop speakers, it was all bass. And I just like, I couldn't really hear it. So I was jacking up the volume and I, and so I just learned, okay, when I'm using this sound effect, it needs to be, you know, so many DB below. So Ryan, I love all those points that you made there, which kind of leads us into, um, you know, maybe you could sell your packages. Maybe you could sell your wedding films for more based on how you're putting everything together. And we're going to get into that right after this break. What would you take on if you had an extra set of hands? What would you do with your free time if you didn't have to edit? So many of us get bogged down in the post-production hustle that we never seem time to focus on our business. John and I both felt that way until we found Weditor. Weditor is a post-production team of top wedding film editors and project managers that give your films and brand the extra eyes, ears, and hands that they need. Not only is Weditor delivering films we love to our couples faster, but we can invest ourselves fully in other areas of our business knowing that Weditor has our back. Be the first to know how your second shooters are doing, how those new LUTs work with your footage, and relax knowing your couples are getting the full attention they deserve on every single project. So what could you do with an extra hand? Head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash Weditor, whether you're ready to start now or preparing for next season. Be sure to use promo code HTFW for $50 off your first project. If you're interested in this service, make sure you head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash Weditor soon. Fall 2020 spots are lined up and filling up fast. Weditor, more than freelance, more than outsourcing. And we are back from break with Michael from Weditor and Ryan, who's working with Weditor, doing a bunch of uh, sound stuff. So let, let's let's jump into that question, okay? How how can you use sound maybe to sell your couples more, or how can you convince your couples that you know sound is is really worth it? You know, worth that extra cost that you're you know charging for your wedding films because of that. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I think like everything, you just you have to educate your clients. Um, but I think that yeah. you know, again, not that many wedding filmmakers are putting an emphasis on sound. So you can differentiate yourself from your competition by talking about sound up front. And going back to what we talked about before the break where Ryan was talking about, you know, do we even know how our couples are watching these these wedding films? Um, You know, you just have to ask questions, right? So you can start, find out, is your couple, find out about the background of your couple in the consultation. If they have a background in sound, right, then, or something, they're a musician, even if they they sing in their local church on the weekends, whatever. If they have some background with some something to do with sound or audio, then it will be an easier sell. So find out about that. Find out how they're watching it. Um, And again, like everything, you have to educate, right? When you think about it, go back 10 years in wedding films. 10 years ago, wedding films were not as common as they are now. But there were those first filmmakers that said, you know what? I've been shooting these 90 minute boring static camera wedding films from the back of the room and we're gonna change it up. What if we put together like some cool three to five minute thing that felt like a music video, it'd almost be like their old Hollywood trailer. Somebody did that. There was a first person to do that and they had to educate their clients. And still to this day, we have to educate our clients on videography or the importance of filmmaking because it still is by many not seen as a need. And you know, our direct competition is of course photography. So how do we use this? Well. Photography can't capture sound, (laughs) right? Sound Um, is an advantage that filmmaking has that photography doesn't, right? We could talk about how film can move in space and time. A couple doesn't really care so much about that, right? That's not a good way to sell it. You could sell it much better, but sound is an easy way to sell it. So don't assume your couples don't care. Um, Talk to them about sound. Are they writing personal vows? If so, it's more likely they may want to be able to hear those in the future. Mm -hmm. There's toasts, right? Do we want to be able to hear those in the future? 
And then, of course, you could potentially talk to them about music or, or you know, natural sounds. How you focus on that? Maybe, you know, you focus on on using natural sounds in your film on hearing those things we mentioned earlier, like popping of champagne bottles and laughter and crying and so forth. Um, back in in 2019, Love Stories spoke at WPPI. And based on their data at that time, um, they had found out that the three things that brides liked the most was uh, the groom showing emotion, the sure. bride revealing herself to her bridesmaids when she's all mm-hmm. made up, and then uh, the father of the bride showing emotion. So where are those two, where's the dad and the groom most likely to show emotion? The first look, or the vows, or the toasts. All of this involves sound. Right, as well as the bridesmaids. When they see the bride for the first time, she's all dressed up. There's all the, oh my God, you're so beautiful. You can hear all that excitement and we need the sound in order to feel it. Yeah, that's really good. And, and like, I think about this a lot. So many times I will get contacted. Like I just did a wedding film that Weditor actually edited for me and three bridesmaids or people that were at the wedding have contacted me since that wedding saying, oh my goodness, like, I'm a friend of a friend of Macy, and, like, I watched that film, and I just cried, and, like, the part where she's reading her letter, and the part where she got to see her dad, and and they're just like, I have to have you. Like, what do I need to, and once you capture that emotion, and you can really, you know, like, if the sound was crap, or, like, I couldn't, if I messed it up, and I couldn't show that moment, like, that, that's the kind of thing that really draws my kinds of clients to me. And so I want to talk about using it, like, the sound um, the elements as a storytelling tool because that's really important to me. I, you know, you're talking about these different types of sound that are, you know, like, common to different wedding films, sound effects, things like that. Is there a way for the listener that you could break it down, like, just a little bit more so we can understand the different elements that you guys offer or that you guys are talking about? Yeah, let me um, break it down in a few compartments to make it a little easier. Um, First and foremost, you have dialogue. And whether you choose to uh, record those speeches, those letters, etc., that all falls under dialogue. And that's dialogue editing, that's dialogue mixing, uh, noise reduction falls under that. How you treat it to be able to um, pop that voice out of whatever environment you were in, either a hotel room or outside during the first look, et cetera. Um, there's all the processes of, you know, removing noise and EQing it so it sounds better and sounds more natural and how you edit it, how you add ambience underneath. You make it um, come in and out gradually so that it's not jarring when, a you know, if you have a noisy dialogue line um, during getting ready, for, for instance, where there's a lot of movement and a lot of commotion. Um, sometimes you don't want it to come in so abruptly and then be kind of jarring <laughs> in your film. You can yeah. smoothly, you can take some of that ambience, you know, from later or before and kind of ramp it up with a fade. That's all part of dialogue editing and mixing. Um, Then the next category would be sound effects, and that's anything Mm -hmm. you see on screen and you add later or from your natural recordings off your camera or whatever road mic or et cetera that you're using. Uh, That could be a waterfall. That could be a fountain. That could be something like a church bell that you get a close-up of and you're adding it either afterwards or taking that natural sound and putting it in there. And that, to me, adds so much more realism to the film. Totally. Like you're you're actually there, yes. you're cutting those sound effects in and making it more real to the viewer, like you're enveloping them uh, with the sounds of the day. And it just sounds, it sounds more polished and more professional to me, in my humble opinion. Um, then there's something called sound design. And that technically could be under sound effects, but it deserves special mention because um, as you watch films of today and, you know, as the um, total professional, uh, you know, awesome sound designers for uh, that work on, you know, the Hollywood blockbusters and the films we have come to love, um, basically that that encompasses just the artistic way of, of creating and molding and um, maybe even, you know, using a sound for something else. Uh, and it, it 
specifically for wedding films, that could be, you know, an awesome whoosh or a transition effect. Like you have a transition that spins in 360 degrees and that um, you add in a special air whoosh or your wind that you you put in there that just it, it adds that special, um, you know, polish to your soundtrack and it, you know, creates uh, a more professional soundtrack. And then the last thing that I would say would be uh, mixing. And in the industry, um, it's called re-recording mixing because you take all of your previously recorded material and you mix it and then it gets re-recorded. So you're recording the master for that film that you're working on with all the dialogue, the sound effects, the sound design, the music, and you're you're bouncing all that down through either a mix board or through your, you know, Final Cut Pro, et cetera, and putting that into... Um, a two track or a 5.1 mix that's called mixing. And that's where, uh, there's, that's a whole other beast in itself where it's its own art, you know, um, and it can be done amazingly well. And if you're, if you're great at it, you're literally guiding, guiding the audience through your film with what you want them to hear at what exact moment. So mm. dialogue is really key in this scene. You turn that up and you maybe bring the sound effects down a little bit, but sound effects drive the next scene. So those sound effects come up and the dialogue takes a back seat to the mix. And that in itself, um, personally, I think that can make or break a film. Uh, the The quality of the mix, you know, is it is the dialogue too low that you're, reaching forward and you can't hear it over the music um is there a sound effects that's that's way too loud that throws you back in your seat uh things like that are all part of mixing and how how you it even extends to how you get the dialogue to mix with the music to, to be able to hear it but you don't want the music to be less impactful if you turn it down so how do you get the music impactful with being able to hear every word of dialogue and have it be exciting and emotionally impactful. And that's, that's all in mixing. It's awesome. Yeah. I think, I think to, to kind of add on that. So th those are the four categories and the biggest thing or the, the biggest way you can make it easier for yourself is to start thinking about those before you're shooting. Right. Mm -hmm. um, if you, if you start thinking about them, a whole new world is going to open up. Right. It's like Ryan talked about, um, about the church bell. Maybe you're shooting some exteriors of a, of the, the church, and oh, it's like, oh, you know, if I shot that, you know, if I get the church bell, I could add that sound effect later, right? Things like that. It's like, um, I'll think of all the sounds again during prep, right? You could get a zip of a dress. You can really bring that zipping shot to life. You can make it much more cinematic simply by adding the sound, um, you know, the popping of the champagne bottle or shooting fountains and wind, um, all of these things, right? Um, it, I would say that really sound also just, it, it builds up the anticipation, Right. And weddings, a lot of weddings are about anticipation. I think that there's more suspense built into wedding films than we often talk about. Um, right. If you think of the wedding day, there's a lot of anticipation. The bride and the groom excited, nervous to see each other. They can't wait for that moment. Um, and we, we can play with that. We can heighten that. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to totally geek out here for a minute. Um, I've got a, an example of uh, that in a in a. Hollywood film. It's by the Coen brothers. It's called No Country for Old Men. And uh, it's a scene you could watch on YouTube. It's the um, Eagle Pass Hotel scene. And basically, if you haven't seen the movie, it uh, has a has a main character, the protagonist, um, played by Josh Brolin. He comes across a duffel bag full of money in the desert, and he takes it. Um, and then later on in the movie, the villain is looking for that money. He wants it back, and he's not going to stop uh, for, for nothing to, to get it. And, um, there's a, this specific scene is where Josh Brolin is inside a hotel room and he knows somebody's chasing him or is after him, but he doesn't know who. And he puts the duffel bag up in a, you know, the, the, the AC vent above the hotel room. And previously the, the script, the way it was constructed, you know, that the villain has a beeping device that tracks this duffel bag and it beeps louder and faster once it gets, once that device gets closer to the bag. And the way they shot this scene was wholly within this uh, hotel room and it, the camera's on Josh the whole time, the main character. 
and he doesn't know what's going on. And that creates that uh, dichotomy of, of the main character not knowing what's going on, but the audience does. And the camera doesn't even have to show that the villain is there. You know, as the audience, that the villain is walking down the hallway. You hear his footsteps. You hear the beeping. And then you see the shadows of his feet at the door, you know, right in front of the door. And still, this main character is oblivious. He doesn't know what's going on. And as the audience member, you're screaming your lungs out saying, get out of there. This is the bad guy. <laughs> Something really bad is going to happen to you. And the the way they created that with scripting and sound design and, and that whole, uh, that's one of my favorite um, uh, examples of how that's used with script writing and then how they shot it. Because the script writing and that whole uh, gimmick, uh, so to speak, that that uh, affected how they shot that entire scene because they knew that that beeping sound would be in the mix and you didn't have to show a medium shot or you didn't have to show the villain walking down the hallway and it makes it that much more suspenseful because you don't see the villain, but you only hear him. And that mm-hmm. was it's just an amazing mm-hmm. way of using that principle. And um, then you might... You might say to yourself, "Okay, how do I how do I apply that to wedding films?" And um, a good example of how that principle can be applied to wedding films is the first look. You have the bride walking up. There's a ton of anticipation of the bride. Um, you can even show, you know, um, cutaways to the to the bridesmaids who are pe- peering through windows or you know watching the whole scene play out. And um, there's a whole there's a whole build that happens, and then the the bride taps the shoulder of the groom he turns around there's this awesome moment that you captured and um in the in the mix you might even you know bring that uh bring the music down softer make a make a trough there uh make it make it lessen so you get more of those natural sounds of the birds the wind the footsteps and then how that affects how you shoot it. You might get a cutaway of the bride's feet walking through the grass or the gravel up to the the groom, and you can bring those sound effects up a little higher because you got that close up of those feet, or you know the hand touching hand touching the shoulder, and then his um, the groom. If you if you mic the groom, that's an awesome way of capturing those moments and the breathing and the the gasp of the of the groom and the you know the 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 whole the whole uh, scene that plays out it just it, using sound in that way I think elevates it and it also makes it a lot more personal to mm-hmm. the the two spouses that you know they're seeing each other for the first time at the day and that's a that's a really awesome moment to capture and it's happening more and more it's it's a trend that I've seen you know more and more first looks are happening and even with the you could you could also apply that same thing with the the um Father of the Bride, you know, other key players that have their first look, um, even with the bridesmaids. Bridesmaids sometimes have a, you know, a reveal with the bride in her dress. And it's just an awesome moment to capture. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know for for us, I've started, well, you know, I've been doing this eight years. So, um, you know, I'm more uh, thinking about, you know, how sound is going to play a part of it or or, or what I can do or, you know, thinking about, oh, if I get, you know, this shot, I I, I know I can do something with that from a sound perspective, you know, really pulling people in and and just how you do that. So there is a big with, with sound and with everything, there's a big part in as you're filming paying attention, thinking about those things. Ryan, I love that point that you're like, hey, when she's walking up, just have her re- redo it or, you know, think of something and just get her feet walking up or, you know, get a close up of, you know, the hand, you know, on the shoulder. Um, and I just, for those of you listening, I just touched my shoulder. If you're not watching the video, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of creepy from over here. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, get, get that stuff. And then you can add in, you know, some kind of sound effects uh, of those kind of things. Okay. So, so as you're shooting, we're thinking about, you know, ways that we can add in sound to it. Um, but then when, when it comes to, you know, like post-production and, and you're in there, you're in the edit, like, how are you, how are you bringing all of this stuff, you know, together? So that, um, comes back to the, the mixing aspect. Once you're done with all of your editorial, you've cut all your sound effects, you've got your music edited the way you want. You've got the builds and the troughs and the, the, you know, the peaks and valleys of your music. What's a trough? 
Sorry, a trough would be a, a lessening, a lower Like a dip, like part. when you dip your music yeah. down? Okay, okay. I exactly. thought that's what it was, but I, I, I wanted to... Wanted to make sure. Okay. You were yeah. asking for the audience. Yeah. Yes. You, you yeah. Knew. Not for me. Not <laughs> we, for me. We knew. We already yeah. knew. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah. So um, that artistic uh, process of combining all those elements, um, I really want to bring to the table like that. That's something that you can learn <clears> and get <throat> proficient, proficient at and really um, become Com- completely professional at and and be able to add that to your film uh it it just to me it just adds so much to to the overall quality um and then when you're when you have it on your website when you have people watching it it really does put you a step above the competition and it's it's almost imperceptible but when people view your work that has an awesome mix and really you know um envelops the listener and and gets them really emotionally impacted that that really uh i think shines as 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 you put it on your website and as you as you get better at it and it's just yeah it's just that process of taking the dialogue sound effects music and putting them together in such a way that um creates the most emotional impact and it sounds pleasant. You can listen to it at a loud volume on good speakers. You could still hear it really well on a phone or a device. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I think that what one area that to really consider, um, is listening to it on different devices, right? Like you said, Nick, with you, when you had that whoosh, you're on your laptop, right? John's listening to it on a different sound system where it has a completely different effect. Um, so when you are done with everything, make sure you do listen to it on a few different devices. <clears throat> and, you know, it's it, as challenging as it may see to, seem to want to learn about sound or, or open up to it, you know, there are some great resources out there. Um, if you are looking for sound effects, uh, SoundSnap, that's a great resource. I know that SoundStripe also has um, some uh, sound effects built in there, but sound, uh, SoundSnap very affordable, great resource to have if you're looking for sound effects. And I would encourage everybody to learn a little bit, at least, you know, at least the basics, the foundations of dialogue editing, um, of sound effects and, and, you know, where to place them, where you can use your natural sound, where you need to, you know, use a sound effect that you find or you purchase online. Um, I would encourage you to look into a little bit about sound design just so that you have a basic understanding, right? Or get up to that, that at least kind of intermediate knowledge. Um, you know, most of us are not going to get you know, sit here and, and be able to invest the time and the years to, to get to where Ryan is or where some of the other filmmakers are, but I think we all can at least get to that level, like with color grading, right? Color grading is also a totally different skill set than editing itself. Um, but most filmmakers do really enjoy color grading, but even if you don't, there are some, I can tell you some of our, there are actually a few of our clients that don't want to ever touch color, um, but I, you know, you want to get to that level where you still have a, an understanding of it. Um, so that you can at least produce something of quality. And if not, you can find, you know, somebody to partner with, um, you know, get, whether it's local, whether it's whether it doesn't matter. It's just that you find somebody who can help you with that. But with, when you have at least some type of an intermediate level of understanding, it's much easier to, to manage that person, right? Or, or to, to talk with them about it than just to hand it off to somebody where you have no idea how they're actually doing it. Yeah, that's, that's really good stuff. And so there's a lot more to talk about. We're going to do something fun. We're going to break down a film here in a second, but we're going to do that right after this break. Are you tired of just sending a link to your couples when you are done with their film? Do you want to deliver something they can actually see and feel? something physical. We are so excited to tell you about Photo Flash Drive. Photo Flash Drive's customizable hard drive and solid state drives give your client a peace of mind. Take your delivery experience to the next level with your couples. Photo Flash Drive uses state-of-the-art Seagate drives that are 100% customizable. PFD has the ability to print your logo, your couple's names, or both on the drive. You guys, we picked up a few of these and they are so good. We cannot wait to blow our clients away with this next level physical product. Not only can you customize these drives, Photo Flash Drive offers high quality, customizable boxes that you can brand with your logo to really blow your couples away. My favorite is the rustic slide box that has our logo engraved on the cover. Having a high quality product like this is something that has been definitely lacking in my business. The custom hard drives and solid state drives with cases are a great way to sell additional items to your couple, a great way to offer a full branding experience, and a great way to leave an impression. 
and today we have a deal for you. Use promo code HTFW15 for 15% off all hard drives, solid state drives, and cases. Head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash photo flash drive to see all the details. Finding the perfect song for your wedding film can be so frustrating. We spend countless hours searching for the perfect song. When it comes to licensing music, Nick and I both love Musicbed. Not only do they have the best music, but their website makes it so easy to find the perfect song and to find it fast. We have both been using the Musicbed's wedding subscription for years and cannot recommend it enough. Not only are they adding new music from incredible musicians like Chapters, The Light, The Heat, and Tony Anderson all the time, they've made it incredibly easy to search their library for mood, genre, instrumentation, and even key. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed and use promo code HTFW for a free month of a Musicbed wedding subscription. howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed. And we are back from break with Michael and Ryan from Weditor. Guys, this is a really exciting part of the episode. Um, you know, when we were talking with the two of you, you guys had an actual clip that you want to show kind of some before, after, kind of showing us what sound can do for your wedding film. So why don't you set this clip up for the listener um, on kind of what we're going to hear, and then uh, you, you can just play the clip if you'd like to right after that. Yeah, great. So this is a one-minute teaser uh, that we edited for a client of ours, P. Tafik Photography. And, you know, to be totally transparent with you, you, you can't find a better wedding to do a sound design for than this one. This was a multi-day Indian destination wedding on the beaches of Cancun. Um, I don't want to give away some of the cool elements in there, but, um, you know, there, there's some, some fun stuff. You just, it is a perfect example. Um, but I think that it is, yes, most weddings aren't going to be like this. But nevertheless, you can still do this with any wedding, but it's just easier to make a point by showing an example like this. Um, so we're going to play two versions. We're first going to play it with the music. Ryan will talk a little bit about it. So I forgot to mention, Ryan did the whole mix for this. So this is all Ryan. Um, so first we'll play it with music, and then Ryan's going to play an audio stem only version. And then uh, he'll break it down for you and talk a little bit more about uh, what he did and, and answer any, any questions John and Nick may have about what, what went into it. That sounds, sounds cool. cool. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so that was the that was the final mix, and that was music with effects. Um, obviously, uh, you didn't hear any dialogue because there wasn't any um, there wasn't any speeches or any of the um, letter reading, etc. on this on this trailer, and that was really interesting um, to be able to work with that. And um, we did, you know, use some of the natural sounds of the the you saw the the people cheering during the um dancing etc um but really it was it was so much fun to add add to this and um adding those transitions and it was it was really well edited with uh the beat of the music in mind so that i could mix those transitions on the beat of the music and the whooshes and the because if you if you have transitions and things that aren't with the beat of the music it's sometimes hard to mix and and create room for those whooshes and things um and it might flam you know when when it doesn't really match up uh timing wise on on the hit of the music so um yeah and then we wanted to play the the sound effects stem so here are the uh sound effects all by themselves
So there it is. And um, <laughs> you, you can hear a lot more of that detail. You can, you can hear that the... Uh, you can hear more sound effects, obviously, when you're listening to the effects stem, but um, weaving in and out of that with the music and make sure, making sure everything is heard and impactful and um, sometimes subliminally so uh, with, the, with the cheering um, and, and things like that. It, uh, and you even heard in the sound effects by themselves, there was actually music playing, but the energy of that crowd was so awesome that I kind of, I, I ducked it under the music so it's very imperceptible when you watch the final mix, but I wanted that cheering there um, mm. to create that um, ambiance and, and energy with it. So um, it, was, it was so much fun to work on, so. Yeah, man, that was, that was really, that was really cool. That was, it was really awesome. One thing that someone, you know, shared with me a long time ago, just with, with the importance of sound and, and what it can do. And, um, I, they said, okay, here's my film. I think this was actually Penn Weddings at WPPI a few years ago where she played like a minute of her video and it had all the sound effect, like it had everything in it. And, you know, it was almost like you you couldn't really pick up on all the sound effects because it's just so natural, you know, to hear foots. But then she played another version where she had all of that muted and just had the, the music and you're watching it and you're like, okay, there's something really, really off about this. You know, it, it's <laughs> like sound when it's done really, really well, it's like you don't, you don't realize it's there in a way. Right. But then if you were to hear two versions, like with it off and you're like, okay, something is missing from this something you know is, is really putting off and and it's it, whenever you add that in there it just adds another layer of depth it adds another layer of emotion it adds another layer of connection you know it's just so so powerful and i'm i'm really grateful that you guys are are coming on and, and sharing this information today to let our listeners know the importance of this side of stuff, you know, uh, not just getting your dialogue clean and, and so that you can hear it and it sounds well, but adding in all of this other stuff just to take it to the next level. So, um, with that in mind, um, you know, as you're looking at, at the wedding world today and, and filmmakers that are creating these beautiful films and these beautiful works of art and stuff, who are who are some of the people that you would say are, you know, at the top, the cream of the crop that are really placing an emphasis on, you know, music in their films? It uh, that's a really good question. And it's it's so hard to name them all because there's so many out there. Sure. Um, the the. A few that come, really come to mind um, almost instantly are, are White and Reverie, The Brothers Martin is amazing, uh, Penn Weddings is also amazing. They have amazing sound. Ray Roman, um, and and among others. Um, but one that I'll I'll say uh, that I saw a few years ago, and they won Best in Show at WPPI at the filmmaking competition. Um, it was uh, sculpting with time and they made this, it was, I, I remember seeing it. it. It was a film that took place in Italy and they had the, you know, it, they did such a great job of matching visuals to music and cutting music, um, using music as the driving force, but then like using close-ups and using, you know, close-ups of pigeons and close-ups of, of the Vespa, like, totally cliche Italian uh, Vespa driving through um, beautiful countryside of, of Italy. And it, it was just amazingly done. And um, they, they are, you know, always, always amazing. So. Yeah. And what, 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 one thing I want to go back to the San Francisco sound connection. What a lot of people don't know is that Alex Douglas, right? He's half a sculpting with time. He studied film in San Francisco. Um, actually, the same four years I did, 2000 to 2004, we went to different film schools, however, and then he ended up staying, I believe, for altogether about a decade. He lived in San Francisco, you know, working with the arts community, with the, the film community, and, and again, sound and experimental film. My film school, San Francisco State, oh my gosh, it was all about experimental film. It was all about burying your film in the, you know, in the ground, um, you know, before you develop it and then developing it. But I think when you go back and you look at Sculpting with Time's work, both visually and with sound, you can see that, again, that influence, that that was driven in those formative years of his studying. Um, and you can see that even today uh, in Sculpting with Time's work. Um, but one thing about all these filmmakers that, that Ryan mentioned, and again, there, there are others that are doing it, 
But what we do notice, there is a commonality between all of them. And what is that? They're all working more or less at the top of the market, right? And so the question is, right, is it a coincidence that they're at the top of the market and they're all putting an emphasis on sound, right? Which came first? Did they, were they, you know, now booking 10K weddings and deciding, okay, well, now that I'm booking $10,000 weddings, now I can afford to put in, you know, invest in sound. Or was it because they were putting an emphasis on sound, it allowed them to differentiate their own films, which allowed them to raise their price point and get higher up in the market. So again, yeah. um, I think that if you do put that emphasis on sound, you are going to stand out from the competition because while there are a good number of filmmakers doing it, the majority still aren't. And, um, you know, it's just going to, it's going to elevate your work. Yeah. And obviously all the people that you've mentioned, you know, are at the top of the market and it's definitely not a, you know, a coincidence and you watch their films and you're like, what is it about their films that just like, it's better, it's better than mine. <laughs> and it, it comes down to the way that they're, you know, producing their sound, the way that they're producing the colors on their films. And so there's these little things that if you're doing them correctly, like you are going to be able to elevate where you are and what mm. you're doing. And that's what we want, you know, why we wanted you guys on today. I remember back when I started in 07, it was at the tail end of like mini DV tapes in your cameras and no audio at all. And just like, you know, I think about my parents and their wedding film was just like a VCR at the back of the, the like the wedding with no sound. And like they recorded on a cassette tape through the, the you know, soundboard or whatever and like, didn't, you know, it's, it's come such a long way. And, you know, I think about just the cameras and all the new announcements and all the talk about cameras and things like that. And it's, it's funny to think about like the history of just wedding filmmaking since I got into it to where it is now, you know, 13, 14 years later. And you watch some of these films by Ray or by, you know, Alex and Whitney or, and you're just like, how is this a wedding film, you know, and, and I guess it, it makes me want to ask you like moving forward with the wedding industry, where do you all see like the, the sound, where do you see it going in the future with wedding films, the sound, the, the mixing, things like that? Where do you see it going in the future? Mm -hmm. So before we go to the future, let's go back way to the past to just stress this emphasis on sound for a second. And that is that, you know, when we look at the oldest form of storytelling in the world, it's pretty much, it's an oral tradition, right? There's, you know, yes, we had pictures on, on the walls and caves and on rocks and so forth, but for the most part, you know, storytelling began orally. Sure, people were probably acting it out as well, but when you think of singing and music and, and chants and trances and then into the actual spoken word, oral stories, oral plays, right, that's all driven by sound. Mm -hmm. um, when you think of sound as a survival instinct, right? Think about it where... You know, you're, you're sleeping, you're camping, you're, you're sleeping with time thousands of years ago, right? You don't see, you don't wake up and see the bear or the wolf standing in front of you. No, you hear the snapping of the twig in the distance or you hear the growling, right? So sound is almost the survival instinct built into us. And so that's how important this is. So when we come into today's world and we look to the future, um, you know, it's really... I would just like to see more filmmakers place an emphasis on sound because bad sound breaks the cinematic illusion. And I'll say that again. Bad sound breaks the cinematic illusion in the same way that a poorly added warp stabilizer to a clip with the wobble, the jello wobble in the background pulls us all out of it, right? It's like, oh my God, that one little thing can ruin the moment. Bad sound does the same thing. It can break that cinematic illusion. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, David Lynch is another one. Um, he had also has a saying about how films are 50% sound and 50% visual. And so I think that when we look at David Lynch, we look at, you know, George Lucas, we, we look at the leaders of our own wedding film industry, all of them are placing an emphasis on sound, right? And I think we should just listen to them. So let's take sound as seriously as we do visuals. Ryan, anything to add to that? Yeah. In terms of technology and uh, taking it to the next level um, that way, I back to the point of you know you get into that echelon of of a really um high budget for your wedding film um i'd love to see stuff being mixed in 5.1 uh 
uh, surround sound. And when, you know, when your client sits down in their theater at home theater and, you know, I think even there's some, some, uh, filmmakers that rent out movie theaters to play back their, Mm -hmm. their films as like a watch party with, you know, everybody that attended the, the wedding and then they watch it back in a, in a theater that's got a five, one system. The more often than not, your clients have a five, one system at home. And, um, how cool would that be to have a, you know, my my wedding film was mixed in five one, and that would also uh, change the way you film it. You would need to get more, um, you know, the ambience of of the the country club you're at or whatever the location is. You'll you'll have to get establishment shots, and then you can really let it breathe with those natural sounds, those ambiences, the the birds and the crickets and the wind, and then you can do things with the music, like add reverb to it, so it splashes a bit into the back and really envelop, and really uh, put those those clients in a 360 degree environment and um, really en- enthrall them and make it make an awesome awesome mix with it. So, yeah, yeah. man. Man, that sounds that sounds so good. And Michael, as, as you were talking about, you know, the fifty percent of your film is visual, or how bad um, audio, you know, can break your film. Um, long time ago, a quote that has stuck with me so much was Rob Adams doing his creative live uh, thing that he had like eight years ago or whatever. And someone asked the question, "Do I invest in a, a good camera body or do I invest in in lenses?" And his answer was audio. That was his answer, you know, the, the, the miking and, and all that kind of stuff. And it's, it, it, it typically seems to be, you know, we geek out so much about the cameras and, and, and the lenses and that kind of stuff. And then audio, maybe we get a Tascam or something like that, but you know, like really taking that seriously doesn't come till later, kind of like with lighting and, and, and that sort of stuff. So, uh, something that's really cool that your listeners, um, uh, might not know is that Ryan is, is working with Michael at Wetter. So, uh, you know, reach out, reach out to them and then, and then he can, he can help you, um, you know, mix your films and get them sounding, you know, like this trailer or, you know, other things, you know, of course, obviously, depending on how you filmed it and, you know, that kind of stuff, if that's your style, but, uh, they, they are working together. So, um, wh- where, where can people find you if they would like more information about, you know, uh, having Ryan or having your team, you know, mm-hmm. uh, mix and, and do the sound on their films, where, where can they find you? Sure. Of course, weditor.com. Um, and aside from that, howtofilmweddings.com slash weditor. And don't forget the promo code HTFW, which will get you 50% or 50, no, not 50%, 50 dollars off your first 50%. project. I'm using along, the code. <laughs> along with a 10% first project discount. Um, but if you are interested in only audio mixing, that is fine um, as well. Um, you know, that is something that we want to offer aside from editing. Because, you know, again, there's a lot of people who love editing. They're not looking for editing. They already have their own editors. Totally fine. Um, so if you are interested in just an advanced audio mix, you're welcome to reach out uh, just for that as that's well. Awesome. Man, that's 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 so cool. That's such a great service. And and as the as we're talking about, you know, the future, you know, is going to be, I think, people focusing a lot more sound because it is so important to their films. That's great that you guys are offering that service. So, Michael Ryan, thank you guys so much for coming on the podcast today and just talking about this and 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 uh, you know letting letting people know the importance of sound and audio, um, you know, for their films. So we just thank you guys so much. Yeah, thank you for having Thanks us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. Michael and Ryan, thank you so much for coming on the podcast this week. We really appreciate you taking the time. Like Michael said, if you would like to take advantage of Wetter and their editing services and also their sound editing services, head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash Wetter. There you can get $50 off your first project. And if it's your first project, you also get 10% off on their regular price. Great deal. Head over to Wetter. That's howtofilmweddings.com slash Wetter. John, it has been great to talk to you. Listeners, thanks so much for tuning in. And until next time, we will see ya. We'll see ya.